Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Nerd Stalker podcast number one. You know, uh, I'm Adolfo here with my friend Greg. Greg, how do I how do I pronounce your last name? Villarela, Rela, Rela, or something like that. Yeah, uh, Gloria. <laughs> yeah, there you, you go. You want to take the uh, American approach towards it? <laughs> yeah. As you guys can see, Greg was smart enough to put his Twitter handle up here, and I was not. So that's my name, Adolfo Ferranda. And uh, Greg, why don't you why don't you just, uh, tell us about yourself a bit here? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, well. I have a long background in tech, uh, pretty much sem semiconductor tech for a number of years until finally uh, uh, at middle management level, they decided to not have me around anymore. So <laughs> decided to go into uh, social media and uh, I currently work as a, a VP of operations at uh, B-Tracks Inc., a cross-cultural uh, uh, web marketing agency uh, doing like Japan, China, U.S. markets and stuff like that. So uh, I'm kind of happy to be here with you, Adolfo. It's a uh, it's kind of a pleasure, and uh, I think we're going to have some fun with this. Yeah, so, absolutely, uh, man. <laughs> so we'll talk tech, we'll talk social, we'll talk whatever we feel like uh, week to week. So I think uh, I think we got uh, some good topics lined up for today, right? Yeah, very cool. So uh, my background, as uh, some of you may or may not know, is in technology also. I started off as a web developer, and uh, now I specialize also in content management systems and search type of things. Um, so really, I'm more on the web tech side and the you know back end sort of side, and I, I know I'm gonna rely heavily on Greg for like the social, a lot of the social stuff, and uh, a lot of his enterprise knowledge also, you know. So it should be fun. We're gonna have a great time. Yeah. Oh yeah. So let's get into it, Greg. Big story, Bart. Absolutely. Bart. Oh, it, 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 so if you guys don't know, oh, well, first tell tell everyone what Bart is because we might have some international viewers who have no idea what that even means. Oh, absolutely, Adolfo. BART stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit. It's the um, poor man's uh, Shinkansen um, subway <laughs> in Tokyo, quite frankly. And you could say the poor man's version of the New York subway. Yeah. So, um, you know, we pretend it's probably some pretty high pollutant thing, but it's really about 40 years old now, um, uh, created in the 70s and kind of shows it. but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe some of the thinking is not the 70s, as we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so what but, happened? Um, they, the story was that there was supposed to be some sort of demonstration, and um, and then what happened? They 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 provide Wi-Fi or yeah. something like that, right? Well, you know, this was crazy. Um, you know, there was this um, shooting a, a year ago of a, a man on a bar platform, and the, the ruling kind of came out for that... Uh, uh, they do the shooting, and so what? What Bart wanted to do is on certain stations that they knew were hot spots, uh, supported hot spots on the actual uh, transit network, uh, different stations along the network. They decided to turn off the cellular towers, um, which is ironic because mm -hmm. last year Bart decided to enable cellular towers inside its stations because you know as you know the towers can't penetrate underground right, right as in most areas and so what happened was for public safety reasons they said we're going to enable um oh, uh, wow. cellular towers <laughs> oh wow so what they go ahead and do is they turn them off and that just sent a whole i would say chain reaction of just thoughts and stuff it's their first public utility uh, slash government agency in the United States to ever do that. Wow. wow. <laughs> to ever do that. We saw quite a, a backlash from uh, the hacker group Anonymous, right? Oh, I mean, they, they came out and I think they exposed some um, uh, usernames and passwords and, and that type of thing. I think, I, I don't know if it was BART officials or something like that, but it turns out um, there was someone on Twitter that said... Uh, I think the BART administration password was something like admin one two three four. I mean, it was it was, oh, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you know, we set, you know, both you and I set up wireless networks for friends as well as businesses, right. and, and you know, it's kind of funny. You know, you're at the end of the day, and probably the password thing is probably the least least thing you think about, but it's probably the most important thing in the world, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so you know, you're in the middle of just setting up all that and, and you're just going like, wow, you know, um, what's going on here? But yeah, that they, they, they basically 
um, have now created a wrath against uh, themselves, Bart. I think the FCC, I just read this week, that it's, they're going to get involved in trying to investigate what, what exactly happened here and wow. what are the ramifications. So, I mean, you know, when you have now the Uber uh, government agency now questioning some of this stuff, um, it's going to bring up a lot of questions. There's also a lot of contractual questions that come up with this, you know, you think about it. Hmm. Um, people like, uh, you know, BART doesn't own any of the networks, right? So mm -hmm. what is in their contract with, you know, whoever, Verizon, AT&T, I don't know who they use, but what is in their contract that has the right to do that? Yeah, um, yeah. So there's there's other things like that, too. So Yeah, interesting legal interesting implications. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, Google Motorola. Google Motorola. Gosh. Can you imagine that? What do, uh, I, what do you think about that? It's, it looks like uh, it's a big uh, supposedly patent defense purchase or yeah you know in fact i read something crazy the other day if you want to go down the patent route actually google bought ibm's mobile patents just recently and that was really under the radar screen wow and no one knows about that so basically yeah, I had yeah no idea. ibm says yeah ibm says i'm not going to play there anymore wow yeah you could have it so actually this whole thing uh, i i believe it it's a it's a portfolio um IP portfolio play, as well as uh, you know, something to support their Motorola, um, their their Android business. Um, what a know, weird, what a weird it's... way to do business, right? I mean, this is, I guess, this has been a, I, this for the general public. This seems to be like an uh, something we're learning now, but it seems like but companies have been acquiring these things as sort of defense positions for as just as a way of doing business, right? For quite well, some time. You know, I, I... You know, I love that article you shared with me this week on really the big three of, uh, you know, the which used to be uh, Ford, Chrysler, and GM, right? Right, right. And now they're they're liking uh, Microsoft, Google, and Apple as the big three of the uh, tech industry. And and you know, if you think about it, um, you know, the big difference is is that we we have the ability to pick and choose from what we want out of the big three, you know, because they don't really control everything. Right. Where if you had the big three of cars, you had to just buy a Ford car, a GM car, or a Chrysler car. You know, you couldn't get a Ford GM or you couldn't get a GM Chrysler. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, only, you only could get one of one of the three. But, you know, interesting thing about these guys is that we could we pick and choose what we want. We could run a PC <laughs> with a Microsoft operating system, mm -hmm. with a Google uh, browser, yeah. Google Chrome browser and uh, run our iTunes on the same machine. So, you know, um, I think it, it's going to be interesting how they play all that. But, you know, I, I read something really interesting. You're talking about uh, IP portfolios. HTC apparently pays royalties to Microsoft because yeah. of their portfolio. That's and right. And I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for every, what, Android phone that's sold, Microsoft is making money on it, right? Yeah, so everyone, the joke about that is that Microsoft is making more money on Android than Windows Phone 7, right? Is, I know. Yeah, you know. yeah. I guess we can. I guess that for another broadcast, we could talk about the yeah. uh, the uh, Nokia Nokia play there someday. Right. 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 <laughs> but you got to wonder. You know what? Uh, you know, supposedly all these other manufacturers are, you know, have stated that they they support this purchase through Google and Motorola. But in reality, Google has not only bought themselves a patent, I mean, they've bought themselves a phone manufacturing company as well, right? So they're going to be in competition with these other hardware manufacturers that they're giving their, you know, free operating system to. That's, I mean, well, that's got to, from what I'm hearing, like, that's worrying some of them, I know. Yeah, I, you know, I thought about this a lot. I talked to my friend, um, uh, Mike Isaiah get wired about this about hardware really not now becoming a commodity and a mm. non-issue these days mm. you know and I think if you think about it you know the hardware itself you know anyone really could make mm -hmm. but it's the IP behind the hardware and the software behind the hardware that really makes the device work and I think that's where we're really gone because if you think about 12 billion dollars um, years ago I think that business would have been much much greater than that it's, it, it is interesting, though, that, yeah. that now, I mean, Google was lacking uh, a full, you know, vertical 
sort of play there in that they had the they had the software, they have search and all this stuff, but they didn't have the end to end experience like like Apple did, right? Where they're controlling their own hardware, and now they they have that now. Or M Microsoft, as Peter Yared like states in this in this article in, uh, on the Web Trends blog. You know how how Microsoft also purchased Nokia. Nokia effectively now they the same thing. They're owning their own, you know, hardware. So now the question is like, you know, what's the next pain point for all these companies? They're shoring up their weak spots here, but it's it's the networks, right? Is the things. So and there's a theory, you know, that Apple could potentially buy a you know, a Verizon or something like that, which sounds insane, but probable. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, Google has still, even after the $12 million acquisition and a 67% increase in, in um, personnel, you know, they still have a lot of money in the bank, right? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I think Apple, app between Apple, Google, yeah, yeah, to a certain degree, Microsoft could, could make a play for one of the networks with them. You know, you start to think about some of the FCC challenges that yeah. we'll have to be talking about when it yeah. comes to that. I mean, is it, are we really creating the second coming of AT&T again? Hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we, I don't know. Are we going to have that conversation about having another monopoly around? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so because of the fact that all, all this stuff is integrated, that we do have a choice between networks, mm -hmm. and, you know, I must – like I said, they start to play at the bigger levels, and I'm not sure. I guess we could maybe someone could buy the grid and help us out or something. Like that. Yeah. Really make a monopoly. <laughs> how, how do you think? I mean, that's a that's a huge point. What you brought up the six, what is it, fifty something percent, sixty something percent increase in Google's workforce now? I mean, that's that's yeah, a yeah. huge change to their culture, you know, of the company. Yeah, and it, it, it's going to be interesting because it's a software company buying a hardware company where you usually have it, it's the other way around, hardware companies buying software companies. Um, but regardless, it's it's an organizational change that I'd love, I, I, I'm going to watch really closely because. Um, Talk about yeah, management Google challenge. Culture, you, know. you know, we're talking about Google culture versus, the, you know, an old school hardware company culture based out of, you know, Illinois. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's going to be interesting how they integrate. I, I worked for a Fortune 500 company that tried to integrate small businesses, and they were just terrible at it. Mm. So I love, uh, let's, let's, let's speak maybe six months, a year from now, and see how, how it really kind of rode out. And less of this, then we'll find out if it was really an IP uh, play and just yeah, they're just going to yeah. just ride on that. That's, those, that's people's lives. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of employees at Motorola, you know what I mean? And the last thing we need now are more people, you know, out of work. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and HP. And... Yeah, let's move right into that one. Well, that's a big story this week. Although they might not be fourth, I I don't know what they are, but they're I don't know. So I hear they're they're here, and then they're giving away HP tablets now because they can't sell these things like for ninety nine bucks. Those apparently are sold out now, and there's a waiting list for those. Uh, they're just unloading the inventory because they're just losing their shirts on it. And then there's talk about killing WebOS operating system, and now now they've come back and said, oh, no, 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 we're going to support this platform for a while, but platform could mean anything. We don't know. Yeah. Is that going to be on a refrigerator or, or, right, right. You know, right. or, or what? Right, right. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I thought about this. I read a couple of things this week about the power of iPad. You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's really – if it's really HP's failure to make something successful versus the really popularity of the iPad. I mean, it's almost kind of like, you know, the, yeah. the percentage of the market the iPad has is just incredible compared yeah. to everyone else. And so, you know, um, which is amazing, better... you know, yeah. I mean, cause even Android hasn't been, uh, any sort of competition for, you know, iOS on the tablet. No, no, absolutely. I mean, those, those, uh, Chinese copiers will copy iPad over a, uh, Android pad any day, so yeah, yeah. and I think um, you know, you know, it, it's another sad one if you think about it. It's like the Motorola story. I mean, this company has been around for years building hardware. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they spun off their communications business years ago, which were, they were really known for. And now that you know, they're talking about the computer hardware business with mm -hmm. printers, right? I mean, if you didn't own an HP printer or saw an HP printer around, you, you, you'd say this person is living in a cave, right? Mm -hmm. But now, you know, with a lot of these other manufacturers, you know, that's less of an issue. But yeah, 
HP getting out of the hardware business and, and dumping OS, I mean, essentially making, I forget what their numbers were. I, I saw a number the other day, but of, of how many um, HP tablets are out there, but turning those basically into, you know, uh, paperweights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this yeah. really validates all those stories that even some journalists were questioning, like whether this is true. You know, they're snickering about, oh, you know, this is another, these Apple fanboy type of stories and, you know, and then and then they go around and do this, and you know they're like, yeah, we're out of the hardware game. We're just going to try to be a services company and compete with Salesforce or something like that. You know. Yeah. Like, what? Um, yeah, I mean, and we see a lot of these hardware companies like Cisco do kind of doing a similar play, hmm. which you know they're not making very much money on their hardware, and hmm. they're looking for other businesses to grow into. You know, the cloud. They call it the cloud. Yeah. The cloud. The yeah. cloud. And I, I, you know, you, you're more familiar with a lot of that stuff than I am, but I, I think that, you know, it's just at least fear from the Silicon Valley, which I see is is, is hardware isn't a, a a industry here in in the Silicon Valley that anyone really is in love with anymore. Right, right. You know, no, no one's none of the VCs or angels I know are going to invest in any hardware companies unless it has yeah, to be something. Yeah, right. All the money's so, in the yeah. cloud now, right? I mean, Apple yeah. going on the consumer side with iCloud, Google yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. is, you yeah. know, Google Docs and everything has been there for quite some time now, but they're now getting into hardware also, it appears. Salesforce killing it from an enterprise perspective, right? Android. Absolutely. How about, uh, Absolutely. If, if, I don't know, if you've heard the Android App Inventor, uh, thing that Google actually it's sort of like a WYSIWYG type of you can create mm -hmm. uh, mobile phone apps for for a droid it's sort of a drag and drop experience I've played with it I really loved it I created a oh, yeah. their sort of a tutorial app where it's a picture of a cat and you tap the cat's picture and it meows how about that huh nice <laughs> nice well I, I mean it, it, I, I I think you're the one who kind of pointed me towards that story this week and it was good when I read it it's it, it's really the educational play around the technology or technology play around the education, right? Yeah. Which I think is something we, we all don't talk about. You know, we talk about this app, that app, and we really don't talk a lot about um, how that has an influence on our kids' educations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, you or know, old think, people like yeah. me who want to learn, you know, how to develop for, you know, Android and mobile apps, you know, or whatever. <laughs> oh geez, yeah, you and me both. <laughs> you and me both, my friend. We could, we definitely want to learn how to do that. I mean, that seems to be the bandwagon. But I, I, I you know, I think, um, you know, I'm glad that Google, you know, I'm sure they have a lot of ties back to MIT. But I think that that's the right place to start to develop some of these technologies. You know, move it away uh, a little bit from the commercialization space, and um, you know, give some of the researchers who really probably have a lot of uh, knowledge about some of the technology in there, kind of maybe add a little bit more and then bring it back into the commercialization space. Uh, right. So uh, if, if you people don't know, Google has essentially open sourced it. I believe they've sort of put it in the hands of MIT to sort of run this thing. Um, and this is, I think, all part of this whole refocusing of uh, Larry taking over Google now, right? Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, killing of uh, Google, Google Labs, essentially, quite a few different mm -hmm. side projects like this. And um, yeah, apparently he wants to refocus in a laser-like focus, probably on mobile is what it looks like, and probably search to to focus on their strengths and also what the future, right? So moving on to, to education, a Missouri teacher sues to block social oh. media law. Now, uh, so apparently there's uh, some, I don't know if it's a senator or something, is trying to pass some sort of law so that uh, teachers can't uh, have direct sort of contact, I think, I guess private type of contact in terms of uh, messages, you guys can clarify or not, I don't know, uh, with students. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it stemmed from really, I think it's a Missouri law saying, you know, essentially that, uh, uh, you know, if you're a teacher in any one of our school districts, you may not use a, a media like, um, Facebook to contact your students. Mm -hmm. And so um, it brings up an interesting issue. Uh, how do you draw that line um, and who's going to enforce that type of stuff? But it also it kind of folds back into that kind of BART type of um, talk we just had earlier in the broadcast is about, you know, where, where does our rights as um, private citizens and public citizens and, you know, you hear this debate all the time with um, – 
people in the media like rock stars, um, actresses, actors, stuff like that, you know, their responsibility to the public. Now, you take that a step further to these teachers, where they're, where's the line of their responsibility going towards minors and how to do that? Because I, I've read a lot of stuff in the social side about how um, social media in certain school districts have actually helped the relationship oh, sure. between teachers and, and kids. Yeah. And, uh, I think, I you, think, you know, uh, I know some teachers that are communicating with their kids on, on uh, well, their students on Facebook also, you know. You can do this on sort of off hours and that type of thing as, as they need. You know, this it seems like one of those things where it's politicians afraid of new technology, you know, the great the great fear of uh, Facebook and social media platforms and things like that, right? And things, and you immediately go back and you think about these AOL days and the fear of like all these online predators and we need to protect our you know, children from this and that. And that's all, that's all granted and, and uh, you know, it should be understood. But this, you know, this is, it feels like a knee-jerk reaction, a play to the media. I think it's going to be one of those laws, which I've seen in the past, where um, you're going to grab people by exception. If they, if they become public enough and break the law, just kind of like this bar thing, It'll be noticed, and then they will have to deal with it. But as far as a everyday, day-to-day -day thing, there's just no way I can see them enforcing it. What do you think about it? Well, I got a quote here. It says, "What the act is so vague and overbroad that teachers cannot know with confidence what conduct is permitted and what is prohibited, and thereby chills the exercise of First Amendment rights of speech, association, religion, collective bargaining, and other insti uh, constitutional rights." Enough of our freedom speech. Now on to yeah, I think now on to controlling the kids. Yeah. No, so uh, another story. What we're talking about this application called Bumble, right? It's a um, oh. super simple, safe VoIP service for children. So here we are on the other story talking about how you know it should be free for students and you know, but this one's for like little <laughs> kids so that they can safely call people on a computer. Um, you know, this really nice GUI and you have like a, an icon of like a parent, a grandparent, a police and and they can just literally click on the big square. And it looks it looks quite nice, actually. And it's, you know, kind of a neat, a neat type of thing. I'm sure we have speed dial on our, you know, in the old days when we had landlines. And so maybe this is like the online version of that. What do you think? No, I, 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 I agree with you. I think this is just the start of technology that's going to help. I mean. I think there's there's data out there that, that you know uh, uh, kids ages of 13 and below are getting so uh, uh, adept to technology as well mm -hmm. as social media mm -hmm. that um, you know this is definitely a play that Facebook could even have. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, Facebook has controlled their privacy stuff uh, pretty well over the last couple of years now after they had some bumps and bruises, but I think that they they got that down so. This could be a single of an extension they could even have on Facebook. You, mm. know, uh, you know, basically a family network, right? Think of, think of it. You know, we have friends on Facebook. Why not family? Ooh, you know, ooh, have, now you're getting into <laughs> scary, <laughs> some touchy channel. territory, right? And this yeah, is uh, <laughs> when Zuckerberg wanted to get kids, uh, you know, younger than I guess a certain age on Facebook, but then he, I guess he was advised not to or something like that, and and. Uh, what? You know, they're minors, so I think you have to, you know, with any of these type of networks, you have to, you know, there's always have to be some kind of advisement. But the question is on social media, a lot of these open media channels, how do you get parents to moderate? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, it's interesting because Facebook is, keeps coming into this discussion. And uh, I just recently heard O Malik mention, you know, what he, he doesn't even see Facebook as this sort of social media hangout place anymore he actually sees it as uh, they see themselves going forward as just a communications platform yeah. uh, i probably tend to agree if you think about the way they have it set up right all the notifications is still going to email for us and you know like it or not email is still relevant mm -hmm. um and it comes from facebook i mean and then everyone else followed facebook linkedin started doing it um <laughs> everyone started figuring out Oh, we better start notifying people on email because they still look at email. And I, and I think, um, you know, I think you're right about that, that statement. I think Facebook is a communications device. And, you know, this, like what we're doing right now, um, you know, I think that it's just a natural extension. I mean, how many people actually now use Facebook messaging? I don't know the numbers. Hmm. I, I don't know what 
I've seen the numbers recently, but mm -hmm. I, I think the adoption rate has gone through the roof of recent mm -hmm. six months. So after they've made a couple changes. Speaking of like yeah. ho hockey stick uh, growth, how about uh, Google Plus, right? Um, there's another company Google. that has tried to shore up their, not only their social, you know, lacking of any sort of social play through Google Plus, but I guess if you see Facebook as a communication platform, Google Plus has to be seen as, as part of that solution for Google as well, right? Um, initially, there was a big rush and everyone wanted invites and everything, and I've been using it for a while. But I've really mm. found myself, you know, it's starting to wane. And I'm, I'm from just general users, I'm starting to get that, that feeling from them as well. You know, uh, obviously, there's the power users who I see on there all the time and love it. People like Kevin Rose and Scoble and, and um, <laughs> what's that, Tom from MySpace or whatever is on there. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, is an yeah, act, yeah. quite an active user. Leo, I think, from, from Twit also. Um, right. And um, it, they're, they're getting a lot of usage, but it seems like it's, you know, it's a lot of work because they don't have like an official API yet, I, I don't believe at this point to sort of like yeah. use your, you know, your Seismic or your whatever you use, TweetDeck or whatever to communicate, you know, or ping, you know, how you can just feed out to your, to your, you know, Twitter, Twitter stream and your Facebook stream. And then you would want it to also maybe go to your Google Plus stream that might be a little more complicated with this concepts of circles and stuff but there is nothing like that yet so it's an additional sort of hurdle in order to 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 communicate there right mm. it's, it's it's more work mm. no no i i, yeah, I think uh, you know you're you're a lot more mature user on the google side than i am i mean hmm. i i have enough time i don't even have enough time to manage uh, any of our well uh, I, i'm more mature than you in too. general if you think about it so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely, my friend. That's why you're leading this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> leading, schmeeding. Because <laughs> apparently Twitter is huge in Japan. <laughs> Let's touch oh. on that story. What is that? What's that about? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, you know, um, uh, Neil Schaefer, uh, uh, a very good um, social media person, and he actually lived in Japan for a while, tweets a lot about Japan. Um, mm -hmm. Just recently, this... Uh, Beginning of this month, um, a famous uh, TV uh, personality um, uh, in Japan tweeted that um, this one major network uh, uh, was providing too much Korean content, I, I mean, just to make it simple on all mm -hmm. of us. And with that was um, it incited basically a revolt uh, through his tweet um, that mm -hmm. – uh, brought about, you know, to our standards, not that many people, but maybe a couple hundred people to um, the network's uh, front doors, and they started protesting uh -huh. uh, just from this one tweet. And and I think it brought up really not the idea of, you know, this guy saying it. It's really the, the, the commentary here is really the power of tweeting and social. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as, as, you know, even going full circle into the bar thing again, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the ability to communicate those things. Now, now the problem is with 140 characters, you know, he, he kind of backtracked and said, you know, well, that's not exactly what I said. But the mm -hmm. problem is that the backlash, uh, you go back to that hockey stick thing, it was just enormous. I mean, yeah. basically his uh, PR agency that, that held his contract for years dumped him. Oh, wow. Um, the, the, the network that held his show dumped him. Um, so, I, I mean – it created such a backlash for him, but also showed the power of social media is that it's almost kind of like, you know, with these people, um, you know, are we really providing guns to people, to babies in social media? Hmm. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, you know, because quite frankly, we're using it as tools now. You know, there's no, there's no uh, read first instructions that come with Twitter. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right, right, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. You sign up for Twitter and you sign up. There's right. no read this first before right. you use it. You know, yeah. so um, uh, a lot of this we're discovering is just by by pure accident. And unfortunately, uh, once you throw something out there, of course you can erase it. But once it gets in people's minds, um, it's really hard to erase. I think it's that stickiness factor you always talk about in social. So um, I don't know what, what what is your feeling about you know. A Appropriate tweeting versus you know, unappropriate tweeting versus influence over the masses. You know, we see, we're you know, it's a fine line because I, I'm starting to see interest. Well, there is quite a bit of interest, obviously, in the enterprise, especially these uh, forward-thinking companies that that do it real well, right? 
people like Virgin, America, or Virgin in general, and, and a lot of these other big, some other big companies, I can't say all of them. Um, but the enterprise is, you know, they're really tiptoeing, especially financials I've seen, you know, really tiptoeing into this thing. Do we really even need to do it? Do, do executives need to even discuss this kind of stuff? And um, we need experts to come in and train us and, and set up a plan. Uh, but then, you know, uh, you got to be wary of all these social media sort of charlatans as well, you know, that are selling snake oil, right? Um, just like SEO experts and stuff out there, you know? Um, so it's, 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 it's a tricky road. I, yeah? I know. I think I read a statistic that, you know, over 50%, and I don't know the exact number, people just retweet without opening the links. And so... Hmm. I'm, I've been a little bit. I've been guilty about of that. that. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, I like. That's why I say I'm a little bit better than that. Um, you know, but I think it goes to a trusted source. So, like Adolfo, if you send me a tweet, I'll tend to retweet it probably without looking at it because you tweeted mm. it. Now, mm. if it was someone else, I don't mm. believe that would be the case for mm. me. But mm. everyone has a different rule set, right? And I think you know. Um, you know, like if you go ahead and, and have you ever done that? Have you like retweeted anyway? someone retweeted someone's post and then, you know, just maybe later you open the link and you're like, oh man, I can't believe I just retweeted oh. that. You know, what I mean? yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. If, if he said you never had done that, you've never been on Twitter. So <laughs> okay, um, right. yeah, I, I I've been guilty of bad links. You know, where my followership would say, hey Greg, uh, the link's broken. Uh, yeah. Oops. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. didn't check it, you know, and, and obviously I didn't check it or, you know, it just happened to be down that time. But, you know, right. no one knows that. They just think he sent them a bad link. Or it goes to some link so, bait site or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh gosh. You yeah. know, and so um, I think that um, it's uh, it, it, you have to be very careful, I think. Uh, I, I now... You know, well, that's why you should go to O'Reilly it. Books and buy how to <laughs> social media something or other, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I can't believe how much I'm bombarded by these things of, mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, what I would call, you know, if it was 2 a.m. in the morning, you'd call them infomercials, essentially, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But we're constantly bombarded, bombarded by social commercials, mm -hmm. I think, um, you know? Um, and if you look at all the top tweets that are out there, the top 10, how to, top five, all those tweets are generally, I open them. So I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't filter them. I, I you know, yeah, they yeah. got me. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. You know, you, Social commercials, trademark, more, Adolfo. I own that now, people. Did you hear you that? Go. You heard it there first, go. right here from there my mouth. There you go, social commercials. <laughs> <laughs> patent. I'm going to patent that. You hey, owe me money. Do it, man. Do it, man. <laughs> do it all like right that. well final so, final story here we're going on on some time here probably is uh and it's a okay. really it's a cool story is a, a startup called pongo they're an online pawn shop so what you do i think is um I, the example they use is like if you have a jet ski although i have no idea how you'd mail a jet ski to them um they would you know or something of value, right, that, that you claim is working, they will undercut. Typically, a pawn shop is, I believe, is 13% is uh, what their interest on the money they're going to loan you or something like that. That's pretty good. And uh, they're under, undercutting them quite a bit, somewhere in the 3 to 5% range or something like that, uh, which is huge, you know, to to commodify that, that sort of industry. Who would have thought, right? And they send you a box, you, you mail your thing to them, whatever it is, they check it out to make sure it's in working order. You get your money, your loan or whatever, right? And uh, and and that applies. How, how cool is that, you know? Oh, that is way cool. You think about, you know, when you when you reported that article to me earlier this week or later this week, I, I thought about it. You know, there's a lot of services now yeah. that are starting to become, I, I, you know, on the internet. And mm -hmm. so it's just one of those services that it's time probably has come. Um, you know, the trust level with eBay and all of these e-commerce sites mm -hmm. have really enabled these type of people. Um, uh, you know, overstock.com. I mean, think, think of all these things that we could purchase online. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the transaction's great. And they come within a couple of days, mm -hmm. you know, Amazon.com. And you go, wow, I, I like this. I right. can do this all day. You know, right. I, I don't have to go down to uh, Target at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. to beat all the crowds because I hate crowds or whatever. And yeah, and or think, like uh, you know, companies like Gazelle, you know, one of the Twit sponsors, where you, if you oh, if you have some old, out of date laptop or camera or something like that that's fallen apart or something, then you mail it to them. They give you some value on it and they send you money as well. I mean, 
Wow. It, or it's almost like a recycling type of thing, right? And yeah, it seems like yeah. the next the next level of that. Or like, um, you know, I think when we think of pawn shops, we think of a lot of movies and pawn dealers. And yeah. Stuff like that, and, and <laughs> the and seedy the side of town. Room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so now. Uh, <laughs> Me in there know, with my chest be... hair and gold chains and silk collared <laughs> shirt. Yeah. That's right. You know, it wouldn't it be interesting if they could actually. Um, uh, if they could actually that should um, be their logo me they, with, you know me all creeped <laughs> out like, oh my god give me your stuff i'll give you some yeah. you know, give you your stuff or break your legs or, i don't know you know you got me thinking about this now now wouldn't it be cool if they they turned the internet into cd or parts of town <laughs> and the different net, <laughs> you know where i'll hey, tell you where you that's at where greg I, exactly i know where that exactly. is so check them out. They're Pongo at uh, P A W N G O is the URL. All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, talk about our friends at SF New Tech. They have an event which you are a part of uh, the team there, and uh, Nerd Stalker is a, a media sponsor, a very proud media sponsor to be affiliated with uh, with uh, SF New Tech. On uh, September seventh, it looks like they're having a great uh, show at Mighty. Um, if I, if I can call it a show, called uh, Bring on the APIs. It looks like they have, um, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, Viadio, V-I-A-D-E-O, Clout, 3Scale, Gigya, Context.io, Salesforce, Simply Hard, and more. We'll be there at uh, at Mighty uh, talking about, uh, I guess the, the topic is APIs. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be a great show. I mean, uh, we do the Ustream for them every every month as well as I see you there too. And you know, that's how we really kind of got to know each other a little bit more. But uh, yeah, man. But I think yeah, it, it's it's going to be a great show. Um, we'll be Ustreaming it live uh, on uh, SF New Tech Live uh, as well as Ustream. So oh, and look, our buddy uh, Mr. Robert Scoble, I think, is going to be there. <laughs> Oh my, gosh. oh my gosh! Joining us to kick off the video VI do APO API contest. So apparently there's going to be yeah. API contest thing. How cool! And free tacos. Yeah. Uh, love the free tacos. Uh, first 150 there gets the free tacos. So be there early or be there square. Yeah, be and square. this is uh, at Mighty here in San Francisco at 119 Utah Street. If you don't know, just go to uh, sfnewtech.com. That's S F N E W T E C dot com. The early bird tickets have been sold out already. Uh, late bird late bird tickets are still available. Looks like they're uh, about twenty five dollars each with a dollar sixty one fee. Uh, you will see a link to it. I would definitely advise you to go check it out. These are amazing events. Oh, absolutely! I I I'm excited. I think August is this first month of the year that they haven't had an S F New Tech event, so I'm kind of kind of. Getting my my yeah. palms a little bit sweaty about this next one coming up. But, uh, for some cool hey, stuff. say hello to Adolfo and I if you guys if you guys arrive at that um, yeah. venue. So yeah, please. We'd, we'd love to say, we'd love to talk and chat uh, whatever you want to do. That, so. Also, want to do a quick uh, shout out to. Uh... Our friend Cassie, who uh, she's at Web Wallflower, has an event called FailCon, and this is going to be October 24th at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco. Uh, FailCon is like one of those events where the the thus you have the name Fail in it is where you learn from your failures, uh, startups, and uh, can learn from lessons from other entrepreneurs who have who have uh, you know learned a lot and succeeded and uh, through these failures and and will hopefully help you to uh, you know not fail or <laughs> to skip those bad steps. And they always have, <laughs> they always have amazing speakers at these things. And it's a super cool event. Uh, they have Catherine Barr, partner at more David Doe ventures, Ethan Block, CEO, co-founder of Flowtown. Uh, Kathy Brooks will be there. Founder of other than that, uh, other interesting people wow. there will be, uh, who we got here, Joe Gebbia, co-founder of, uh, and CPO of Airbnb. And they're getting a lot of press lately, as you guys may know. Um, Evan Hamilton, community management at User Voice, uh, and Patterson, an Android director of engineering at uh, Google, and a lot more. So make sure to check it out. It's a uh, FailCon. Go to failcon, thefailcon.com. That's uh, T H E F A I L C O N dot com. It's October 24th at Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah, that'd be wow, cool. It's been fun, man. Right on, right on. So, Greg, where fun. can we find out more info about you? Oh, thank you. Um, well, you can connect with me uh, and just, you know, 
you know, mention me, uh, mention that you saw this broadcast or whatever uh, at, at Social Break. Um, and you can also reach me um, through uh, Greg at btracks.com. That's my company address. So I'd be happy to hook up with you guys and, you know, talk, chat, or share some information with you. So. Great. And you can always find me at, at NerdStalker on Twitter and NerdStalker.com. See our videos on uh, nerdstalker.mevio.com and more. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, Greg. Right. So long. Take care, Adolfo. Next right. week.